Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, a standoff continues on the city's northeast side more than 24 hours after it started. The federal government releasing new guidelines to safely reopen the economy. I'm Inez de la Quatera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. And live cam giving us a look outside. It's a pretty quiet start to your day on this Friday morning, but things are going to change. Good morning to you. It is Friday. It is May 15th. Yay, welcome to your Friday, everybody. I was reading some of the emails that Adam Kasky was sending out uh, between all the meteorologists, and it sounds like it's going to get a little dicey tonight. Yeah, tonight, uh, later on this afternoon, we may see a couple of thunderstorms popping up, and the thing is, the atmosphere is really kind of volatile, as I like to say, so mm -hmm. if something pops up this afternoon, could be strong, but tonight is the, the window in about uh, mid-evening up until right before sunrise tomorrow. And what's our biggest threat with these storms, Mike? Hail mm -hmm. and then some high winds and then also heavy rain. Okay. So that's what we'll have to watch out for. But the good thing is it's going to be kind of fast moving, so it won't just sit in one spot as far as heavy rain. Do we rains. have nice weather after it? Yeah, not, not bad after that uh, for the rest of Saturday and Sunday. First of all, this morning, yeah, it's, uh, it's pleasant out there. It is very warm, though. We're almost 10 degrees above normal. 76 at uh, the airport, 75 Randolph. Normal low temperatures right around 67. And, of course, the humidity is back. So not only is that going to feed potentially heavy rain, but also the humidity makes the atmosphere that much more unstable. Mold is on the uh, high side. Throughout the rest of today, you know, there could be a sprinkly shower this morning. Nothing showing up on radar. I was talking with Nick and some of the Transguide cameras. There's nothing in and around town, but just a light little sprinkle. Don't be surprised at that. Cloudy at noon and a couple of storms going to start to pop up later on this afternoon. Again, anything that does pop up could get pretty strong. Then tonight we're going to be seeing the uh, potentially heavy storms later on this evening, uh, say about window nine o'clock up through about six, seven o'clock tomorrow morning. And there's also the threat for the severe weather as we were talking about. And this has been expanded to include all of the I-35 corridor, the slight risk for severe storms. And then the marginal risk goes off to the east uh, a little bit more. But basically the western half of our viewing area is under the threat for some potentially severe storms really starting late this afternoon and then tonight. More on the weekend forecast in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is. Officer Nick Solis. Good morning, sir. And good morning, Mike. And good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Friday morning. OK, no accidents to report right now. Roadways look very good. There may be a traffic convoy going eastbound to I-10 past La Quintera onto Cambolis in that area. But uh, it looks like for the most parts, everything's clear. Now, we do have some construction on 35 and 1604. This is a usual construction there that goes usually westbound towards Green Mountain. Hopefully this will be cleared up by around six o'clock. But other than that, a little bit of construction on 90 Medeo Creek and a little bit of construction on I-10. Things are looking good, though, on all over the city. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. It's been over 24 hours now since the standoff started on the far northeast side. San Antonio police called to a home on Sunrise Creek near Ben's Engelman just before 1130 Wednesday night. This all happening just outside of Kirby. Police say a man fired shots, then barricaded himself inside the home. SWAT officers surrounded that house after a neighbor told police his property was hit by gunfire. Police say the suspect was not barricaded in the home alone. We're told a 14-year-old managed to get out safely. Police have not mentioned the relationship between that minor and the suspect. San Antonio police say a man who was run over by an Eight train by eight train cars, I should say, is expected to survive. It all happened last night around 10 o'clock on the city's east side near the intersection of Palmetto and West Fall. Police tell us that the victim was hurt during the incident, but his injuries aren't life-threatening. They say he was taken to the hospital and he's expected to recover. A new case of COVID-19 for HEB. The chain confirming this case was linked to someone who worked at a store in New Braunfels. HEB says the partner was last in the store in the 600 block of Walnut back on May 5th. HEB also says all partners at the location have been notified and the store has been deep cleaned and sanitized multiple times. With several safety measures in place, the store says, quote, our primary focus is keeping our partners and customers safe, end quote. A reminder, one of those safety protocols is wearing masks. The employer has a right to do that. How I many signs you see, no shirts, no shoes, no service. And they certainly have the right to do that, and we're encouraging them to do that. Um, it, it's, it's really the most important tool we've got is the employers requiring that, and most of them have posted right on their door. Meanwhile, here is a look at the latest numbers. This morning, Bear County reporting 2,041 positive cases of COVID-19. 
Total number of deaths increasing by one for a total of 59. At the same time, more than a thousand people have recovered. 931 cases remain active with 65 cases uh, listed as severe. Those patients had to be put in the hospital. Well, there will not be a 60-day grace period for people behind on rent in San Antonio. The proposed ordinance failed by a single vote during the latest city council meeting. If passed, it would have required landlords give a notice of proposed eviction 60 days before they could actually begin the process of eviction. This would give renters a chance to catch up on payments. Numerous landlords who came to speak at the meeting strongly opposed it, and council members say they were worried about possible legal challenges. It's irresponsible tenants that, is, that this ordinance helps. With the stroke of a pen, you will make me bankrupt. I do not want another lawsuit because the city cannot afford one. Both Dallas and Austin have adopted similar ordinances meant to give renters more protection from evictions. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention issuing new federal guidelines for reopening the country. This as many states have already begun to do so. ABC's Inez de la Cuatera is in Washington with the latest. Overnight, the CDC releasing new guidelines, providing the most specific guidance yet from the federal government on how to safely reopen, recommending schools and camps stagger drop-offs and limit how often kids mix into groups, adding restaurants can reopen as long as they can encourage social distancing and offer flexible leave among employees. The guidance released after weeks of delay and after a top government scientist warned Congress about the dangers of reopening too quickly. The window is closing to address this pandemic because we still do not have a standard, centralized, coordinated plan to take our nation through this response. But time is running out because the virus is still spreading everywhere. At least 45 states have already eased restrictions in some way. Georgia and Florida showing little to no surge in cases after their partial reopening. Parts of upstate New York reopening today, while stay-at-home orders at New York City and other parts hit the hardest are once again being extended, now until mid-June. In Wisconsin, people flocking to bars and restaurants hours after the state Supreme Court overturned the governor's stay-at-home order, the president calling it a win. I also I also think that we should all be able to decide if we want to go out or not. But experience crowds or unsafe conditions that make you feel uncomfortable, you should go home. The virus hasn't changed and neither has the science. New Jersey announcing the Jersey Shore will open in time for Memorial Day, but with restrictions. Today, the House will vote on another multi-trillion dollar stimulus package meant to help state and local governments. Republicans have declared it dead on arrival. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. Friday morning, 438, 76 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, the battle over the beach. How some beaches across the country are opening with new guidelines as we approach Memorial Day weekend. And next, a warning from health officials that say the coronavirus might never, ever go away. And hey, LiveCam giving us a look outside. We have to keep an eye on the weather. And Mike, of course, is tracking the potential storms for overnight. We've got you covered on GMSA. Four forty one coronavirus might be here for good. The World Health Organization says it's possible COVID-19 may never go away and there's no word on when a vaccine will be ready. CDC also issued a warning about multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children, which may be associated with COVID-19. The syndrome has been reported across Europe and at least 18 U.S. states. The New York Stock Exchange floor will partially reopen after Memorial Day. The exchange's president says only a small number of brokers will be able to return. They'll have to wear masks, have their temperatures taken, and keep their distance from one another. The trading floor will get a thorough cleaning each day. The exchange has only allowed electronic trading since March 23rd, after two people who had been at the facility tested positive for COVID-19. The World Trade Organization's Director General plans to step down in September, one year before the end of his term, Roberto Acevedo is serving his second four-year term set to end in 2021. The decision comes at a critical time for international trade as the pandemic continues to take its toll on the world economy. 442, 76 degrees. Still ahead, a preview of the brand new Scooby-Doo movie that's available to stream. Plus, more on a new Michael Jordan documentary. Roro. Roro. And next, more on a local organization offering virtual programs for families who have antsy kids at home thanks to all the social distancing.
In this morning's GMA First Look, the battle over the beach. Those surfboards again slapping into waves on some American shorelines. And with Memorial Day only a week away, authorities bracing for that deluge of people. In California, most beaches are open, but only to exercise and surfers. And to some folks, lifeguards running to a rescue might be hard to recognize. We're going to adopt the full uh, isolation kit. We have gloves, masks, goggles. We're going to do uh, everything that we normally would do with just a couple extra layers of uh, protective equipment. We're going to have different tan lines this summer for sure. <laughs> Rescuers on beaches told to assume everyone they come into contact with is COVID positive. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you how lifeguards are adjusting to this new normal and what you need to know to stay safe this summer. With your GMA First Look, I'm Mona Kosarabdi. ABC News, New York. 445, what, we're like seven weeks into this, maybe eight. Social distancing obviously can lead to some antsy kids at home. No. Mm. Yeah. Hemisphere is offering virtual programs for families who can't go play at Yanaguana Garden during this time. Sarah Costa joins us live from home with some of those options. Happy Friday, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi, happy Friday. Yeah, you know, this is all part of Hemisphere's hashtag park it at home program where they are providing high quality virtual reading sing-alongs and also arts and crafts. So let's get started with their super fun Saturday series, which goes on for eight weeks. These are virtual uh, learning programs. Andy Rue and Andy Green, the Andy Rue universe who uses music and storytelling to teach social skills and teamwork. These are every Saturday at 11 a.m. on the Hemisphere Facebook page through June 27th. Now let's take a look um, at the for now also for a weekday activity you can register for a free virtual story time with Hemisphere volunteers Miss Kim. Miss Kim reads a pre-selected book via a private Zoom meeting every Tuesday at 10 a.m. to the for the first 100 families who register online. The books are paired with science, technology, and an art-related activity. Now take a look at your screen for the Park It at Home program information. Here are the virtual sing-alongs at 11 a.m. on Hey, Sarah, can you hear us real quick? I hate to interrupt, but it's almost like your microphone fell off or stopped working. Can yeah, you hear me? Yeah, something's weird with your microphone right now. Yeah, can you, can you check real quick? And if not, we'll come back to you because we can barely hear you right now. You sound like you're in a drum. <laughs> so, so see if you can fix it. We'll go back to you. I don't know what's happening there. But in the meantime, we can check on the roadways. Yeah, we can do that. Why don't we go ahead and go to Nick, and then we'll get updated with Mike on the situation. We're a little worried about what could happen in the next 24 hours. But right now, roads are dry, Nick. Roads are dry, Mark. Things are looking good out there, except if you are on westbound I-10 at Probant, there has been a one-vehicle accident where the vehicle tra was traveling eastbound, went over the guardrail, and is now westbound somewhere on those main lanes there. We'll get you more information on this as we can. But uh, right now, this is... a uh, this is the only accident we're dealing with at this time. Please be careful if you're heading that way. All right, some drive times. If you are on 10 westbound from the northwest side, from I-35 uh, to 1604, it's a 12 minute commute. And if you're on 10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to I-35, 13 minutes. So really good times there. Trans guide, 35 and 1604. Looks like that construction is still there. Keep that in mind if you're heading that way. 10 and Ralph Fair looking good. 281 and winding way looking better and uh, 35 at Flores seems really good. Sounds good, Nick. Boy, this is one of those times I wish my pickup actually fit in my garage. You know, you're talking about the hail issue and I've still seen neighbors with hail damage yeah. from storms past, you know, here in South Texas. The nice thing is everything's going to move fairly quickly tonight, but we're looking at some pretty hefty downpours and high winds and, and hail are going to be the, the biggest threats later on tonight. So we could actually see a couple of stronger storms trying to develop later on this afternoon, too, because like I said, the atmosphere is pretty, uh, pretty volatile right now. So would you say, oh, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, but it's really overnight that we need to be watching it. Right, right. It's going to start later on tonight and in the wee hours tomorrow morning. So get to that in a second. First of all, yesterday, uh, boy, it was a beautiful day for these folks up there in Bolverde. And look at the, uh, 
Yeah, where it says after five and a half inches of rain, finally had a chance to uh, cut the grass because yeah, Northern Bear County, of course, a couple of days ago just got uh, inundated. That's also going to be another problem we have to watch out for is the fact that, uh, you know, there was so much rain a couple of days ago in uh, Kamau County. And then yesterday we had some of those showers and thunderstorms. So in many places, the ground is saturated. So as we get some potentially heavy rain, flooding could be an issue overnight. We've got clouds hanging around here this morning. Haven't seen anything showing up on radar. I haven't seen any reports of any mist or drizzle, but if there's a little sprinkly shower out there, just don't be surprised by that. And obviously it's going to make the roads kind of damp. Temperatures are in the uh, low to mid 70s, so we're almost 10 degrees above normal right now. A lot of humidity out there as well. And so that not only feeds the rain, but also that makes the atmosphere it, humid air, believe it or not, is much lighter than dry air is. And so that's why the atmosphere always gets very buoyant, as we say, and it's very volatile. So here's the uh, computer model. And this is going in through this afternoon. There actually could be a couple of thunderstorms trying to pop up this afternoon. Rain chances today, overall chances aren't that great, but if something pops up, it could get strong fairly quickly. Then we go into the evening hours, about dinner time. A few more of these showers and thunderstorms will start to develop. And then what we're going to be watching is this line off there to the west. And this is just after midnight tomorrow morning. And We'll start to see these things obviously developing in the nighttime hours, and then this line is going to be working its way on through here. And basically, again, in the overnight hours, and most of it's going to be gone, looking at a lot of the computer models by about sunrise or just after that tomorrow morning. So by the time Sarah's on the air tomorrow morning, a lot of this is going to be out of our area and moving off to the east. And then in behind that, we will keep uh, some clouds around, and there actually could be a couple of uh, couple of showers or thunderstorms scattered about going into tomorrow afternoon, even on Sunday afternoon, but the odds of rain are not that great. Now we do have the severe threat on top of the heavy rain potential. There is the severe threat and this has been moved. Storm Prediction Center only had this in parts of the hill country yesterday, but now it does include basically the western half or almost western two thirds of our viewing area right along I 35 the corridor and then off to the west. And so again, high winds and especially hail are going to be the biggest threats with this uh, storm complex as it moves on through here and then going into Saturday morning, some of the leftovers and that's why it still has a marginal risk here in the eastern half of the area. But this is just as this moves across the the area into Saturday morning. So forecast today, uh, not a bad morning. Uh, it is warm and humid out there, though, and then we'll just have cloudy skies at noon, 84 degrees southeasterly wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And then this afternoon, we're going to see a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms trying to develop around here. It's just going to be on the hot side up to 89 degrees. Then we get into tonight, and that's when we're going to be seeing the potential for those stronger thunderstorms, heavy rain. That'll be overnight into tomorrow morning, and we'll cool down a little bit tomorrow 82 for a high temperature uh, as far as rainfall totals widespread about mm, say one to three inches and then you're going to have the heavier pockets on top of that by tomorrow morning after that sunday a couple of scattered showers first part of next week looks pretty good as far as sunshine but pretty good yeah but later on tonight good. And uh, tomorrow morning, got to watch out for it. So and case it's got you covered. They have a whole yep. plan in place with all the meteorologists. Yes, together. indeed. 453, 76 degrees. Up next, there was a bunch of new stuff to watch this weekend. We'll have a preview of a new Michael Jordan documentary as well as a brand new Scooby-Doo animated film, which I can't wait to see. From Taylor Swift to Michael Jordan to Scooby-Doo, a bunch of new stuff to watch this weekend. Shaggy and Scooby were taken. Scoob is an animated Scooby-Doo adventure with big time stars doing the voices, including Will Forte, Zac Efron, Amanda Seyfried, Tracy Morgan, and more. That's available for rental Friday. Sunday night on ESPN, it's the final two episodes of the Michael Jordan Chicago Bulls docuseries, The Last Dance. And also Sunday night, it's the finale of American Idol on ABC, followed by the concert special, Taylor Swift, City of Lover. Speaking of the last dance, Michael Jordan's daughter Jasmine is watching and learning along with the rest of us because growing up, she says she didn't really realize her dad was the greatest of all time. I laughed because I actually Googled my dad at one point just to figure it out. I'm like, okay, why is everyone so intrigued by you? Like, you're just dad. Like, you're not that cool. But lo and behold. <laughs> Jordan's kids have not been a part of the series so far, but that'll change Sunday night. 
I'm the bad guy. Billie Eilish, the latest singer to postpone a 2020 world tour because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Her Where Do We Go trek was due to kick off in Mexico and South America at the end of May, followed by a summer run through Europe, then a trip to Asia. She got in three U.S. shows in March before everything shut down. And happy birthday to NFL Hall of Famer and Dancing with the Stars champ Emmett Smith. He's 51. While Sopranos star Jamie Lynn Sigler is 39. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 457, 76 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, what's next as the Bear County Commissioner's Court passes a resolution supporting the expansion of mail-in voting. And a new warning for parents, the popular app TikTok accused of violating kids' privacy. We have more information coming up in Tech Bites. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, the battle for the ballot box. More on how local leaders are supporting the expansion of mail-in voting. A man under arrest after police say he used fake money to pay for a cab ride. Outside with live cam, it's calm now, but uh, our team of meteorologists is keeping an eye on severe weather odds that appear to be ramping up later today going into tomorrow morning. We'll get an update from Mike in a moment. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, the 15th of May. Welcome to your Friday. So happy to have you with us this morning. Yeah, make plans probably to stay in tonight because it sounds like it's going to be really messy. Yeah, we've got a, uh, a system which is um, kind of setting up to move through here probably about mid evening the window of opportunity is going to be about mid evening through just before sunrise tomorrow morning. And uh, right now we are starting off very warm, very humid temperatures are in the uh, the 70s as of right now. And this is not going to my computer's not going to do for me. Darn it all. I've got a dead battery. Let me do this. We've got. <laughs> Grandma's glow. I'll just stand right behind the graphics right now. Temperatures are in the 70s right now, and we've got uh, dew point temperatures that are extremely high. And uh, around the area, everybody is about 10 degrees above normal as of right now. And now, of course, it works. <laughs> Molds on the high side as well. And we are going to see temperatures getting up into the mid 80s today at noon. Don't be surprised if there are a couple little sprinkly showers around the area this morning just because of the extra humidity coming on in here. And then even later on this afternoon, there's a very small chance that we could start to see some thunderstorms trying to fire up going in toward dinner time. Anything that does fire up because the atmosphere is very volatile today uh, could become severe fairly easily and high winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats as far as any severe storms. Then later on tonight again about mid evening and then in through the overnight hours is when we have the best opportunity to see some not only the severe storms but also the heavy rain move across the area. So warm, humid, couple of showers, few storms, upper 80s later on today and then it's tonight and tomorrow. Heavy rain is also going to be a threat widespread about mm, two to three inches and then we'll have some heavier storms on top of that, some heavier downpours on top of that. Then we'll start to uh, clear out a little bit in the afternoon tomorrow as well as Sunday and overall the weekend doesn't look bad, but we do have the the severe threat and Storm Prediction Center did expand the slight risk to include all of the I-35 corridor and off to the west. So basically the western two thirds of our viewing area has that uh, kind of number two on the scale, if you will, the slight risk for high winds and hail. And that's going to be later on, well, even this afternoon, but especially tonight and overnight. More on the rest of the weekend forecast coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Salis. Any problems out there, Nick? Not right now, Mike. Things are looking good. If you are heading to work right now, expect a smooth ride. No accidents to report. The only accident that we had was this one here on 10 West and Probant. This one is now no more. It's on uh, private property now, so it's all cleared up. Good news there. Taking a look outside, 281 at Winding Way looking really good right now. Traffic slight there. 35 and Flores as well. Things are looking great there. 10 West and 1604. We had a, a, tra a traffic convoy earlier go through there. I haven't seen them since. 10 at Lock and Terra, the same. Things are looking good. And let's do one more here. 10 at Ralph Fair down the road. Looking amazing. Well, I hope everyone has a great, wonderful day. Mark, Leslie, back to you. Nick, thank you very much. Well, new this morning, a man is behind bars after he allegedly used fake money to pay for a cab ride. According to the arrest affidavit, the incident happened back on March 26th. 30-year-old Brian Garcia told a cab driver that he needed a ride downtown. Now, after the ride, he told the driver he forgot his wallet, but he would be back with money. A while later, the cab driver noticed the money was fake and called police. Police reviewed the money, verified it was counterfeit because they all had the same serial number. He then told he's now facing forgery counterfeit charges.
The state appeals court has upheld a temporary order from a state district judge that could expand the number of voters who qualify for mail-in ballots during the pandemic. Meanwhile, the Bear County Commissioner's Court has now passed a nine-binding resolution supporting the expansion of mail-in voting. Under Texas election code, voters have to give a reason to apply to vote by mail. Some of the pre-approved reasons include being disabled. In Commissioner's Court, Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez said that under current law, lack of immunity can qualify as a disability. County officials say the push for this change is for the safety of both voters and judges. We hope that this holds up. Uh, as we all know, the average age of a judge is 72 years old. They're susceptible in a very, very uh, group that is very acceptable to this. And we know that anybody coming to the poll that has an underlying health condition is, is uh, in jeopardy when they come to the poll and stand in a line. Oh, that's the well, despite the resolution, the state of Texas is not interpreting the law in the same way. In fact, the state is facing several legal challenges from voters and civil rights organizations trying to expand vote by mail. So far, it's not clear what will happen. Bear County runoff elections are scheduled for July. Let's take a look at some of the cases of COVID-19 in surrounding counties. Hayes County has a new case bringing the total to 218. Similar situation in Medina County, their total 48. Comal reporting 68 cases. Guadalupe County remains at 101. We're tracking all these counties and cases on our website at ksat.com. Meanwhile, thousands of dollars worth of instruments have been stolen from a West Side church. It comes just as they prepare for their first in-person mass. That's just so wrong. As our Patty Santos reports, the St. Paul Catholic Church's choir is now left wondering how they're going to perform. It's sad that a building that is really sacred, that a building that was open to everybody was broken into. From outside, they broke in this. And Workers that. at the House of Mercy building, part of St. Paul Catholic Church, found a side door had been breached and someone had rifled through the entire building Sunday night. As any of you who have lost anything, you know how it's a sense of defilement. Missing were the computer used to broadcast mass, guitars, amplifiers, microphones, and cords, among other items used mostly by the Congolese Catholic Choir of San Antonio. Seen here performing with those instruments. Most of the instrument, I bought them with my own money, and it's, it breaks my heart. I invested it a lot for the sake of the choir. For the community's safety, they want the thief caught. The main concern is what happens here at St. Paul's could happen in any any home in our neighborhood. With only a set of drums and an amplifier left, the choir will have to cancel an upcoming event until they can replace or borrow the instruments. It's going to be also the first opening mass at May 24th. Hopefully by then we can have some uh, equipment uh, back. It will be the first in-person mass since the stay-at-home orders were lifted by the state. They pray for justice, but grace for the thieves. And if the gentleman could know that he entered into a house of mercy and God's mercy is always there, even if you steal my computer. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. 507, 76 degrees. Stella had a warning for parents whose kids use the app TikTok. Your child's privacy could be at risk. Plus, We've had to learn how to be extra creative during this pandemic. I'm Sarah Acosta. Coming up on GMSA, how one local family used a virtual lemonade stand to raise money for the San Antonio Food Bank. And outside with live cam, we're on storm alert over the next 24 hours. When could the worst of it move through? Mike will have an update. We'll be right back. Friday morning, 11 minutes past the hour. During this time of pandemic, lemonade stands have been put on hold, but that's not the case for one family. We started a virtual lemonade stand to use it as a teaching and a giving tool. Sarah Acosta joins us live from home to introduce us to the Espinosas who have used the funds they raised to help the community. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Leslie. This is really a heartwarming story. Mom Erica Espinosa, she actually lost her job during the pandemic, but calls it a blessing in disguise because she said she was able to use that time and spend it with her children and teach them how to give back to the community. Erica Espinosa, mother of three and five-year-old Andy and Aldis, has added teacher to her resume, like the hundreds of thousands of parents across the country. While teaching the alphabet and getting to the letter L, she wanted to get creative, while also teaching her children how to give back. 
So I thought lemonade stand. Mm -hmm. However, with the times right now, it didn't seem really like the right thing to do. Um, but then I thought, hey, why don't we do it virtually? Their goal with the money raised to give back to the San Antonio Food Bank. There's big kids that are going hungry right now. The family was blown away from the response to their Facebook post where they shared their virtual lemonade fundraiser. Said, okay, let's maybe make 200. That number shot to over $2,000 raised. So we created an assembly line. My job was to like put all the packages. When we deliver them to, on their doorsteps, do you know what? They, they come out and they say they're, um, they're just happy. The Espinosas took it a step forward and donated the leftover goodie bags to local frontline medical workers. With such the you know outpour of donations, most people said, no, uh, we just want to donate, keep the lemonade. Um, so I just wanted to do something to kind of honor those people. Erica's husband, Adrian, proud of his family, calling his wife a rock star for taking teaching and giving to another level. Keeping the kids engaged, because as you can see, they're not the most engaged. Um, they get bored easily. So, you know, just uh, her doing all this stuff really was amazing. Thank you for our donating to, for, to our lemonade stand. Well, Adrian Espinosa's husband told me that he actually spoke with his company, Horizon Therapeutics, and they agreed to match the amount that the family raised, which is $2,000. So in total, they've been able to donate $4,000 to San Antonio Food Bank. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark that is terrific. Thank uh, you, Sarah. That's good stuff. Hey, Sarah, can we just say real quick how cute your place is behind you there? I love how you set it all up. Oh. Thank you guys. It's it's my it's my nest. It's my cozy nest. She's like, good. I spent a fortune at Pier One. I hope it looks good. And we're just <laughs> glad to have you back too. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. See you in a bit. Oh my gosh, you guys are ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, we are. We kind of are. 514, 76 degrees. Still ahead, more on a special tribute to legendary Muppeteer Jim Henson that you can actually be a part of this weekend. This is what it's all about. Why the heart beats the pulse races, why the weight of the world is carried with a smile, and where the comfort that's so desperately sought is found. This is what's worth protecting, embracing, and ensuring for others, especially now. This is why Medicare from Blue Cross Blue Shield continues to improve what we can do for you, putting over 80 years of healthcare expertise into action and making coverage even more accessible in times when it's needed most. We're here for you now and always. This is the benefit of Blue. In today's Tech Vice, a serious charge against TikTok. Child advocates tell the FTC that the app is collecting personal information of children under 13 without their parents' consent. TikTok has not commented on the latest complaint. Last year, the company revamped its app and paid an FTC fine for violating a children's online protection law. And Michigan robots are now making food deliveries. Two college professors have created the Rev-1. The autonomous robots roll through the streets at 15 miles per hour to a pre-programmed address all without putting customers or workers at risk during this pandemic. Elmo's world has come to Instagram. The giggling red Muppet is the first Sesame Street character to have its own account. According to the description, it's run with the help of Elmo's mommy and daddy. He's already got more than 13,000 followers. So give Elmo a double tap there on this post. Those are your tech bites. 518, the class of 2020 graduating in the midst of unique challenges this year. And in our new Great Graduate Series, we're featuring outstanding graduates from across the city. Today, Stephanie Cerna introduces us to Jewel Medell. She's the valedictorian for SAISD's Young Woman Leadership Academy, and she says she's also been working hard to be a role model for her younger sister. 
I've been going to YWLA for four years. Jewel Medell is at the top of her class at the Young Women's Leadership Academy. She's in the National Honor Society, the Young Poets Society, volleyball, basketball, track, and she's received a full scholarship to Brown University. I'm gonna be the first college graduate in my family. So, and I wanna really be a role model for my younger sister because I know that it's just us two, us girls and the family and my mom. So just being able to be that role model for her is really important for me because I want her to know that if I can do it, she can do it. I'm very excited to see what the future will hold for her. Michelle Grajeda has been Jules' instructor for four different courses over the past four years, and she also heads the Young Poets Society. She tells us Joel goes beyond just earning a good grade. Since the moment that I first started interacting with her in my classroom, I could see her great insight, even at a young age, her ability to analyze complex texts and then apply them to the world around her. It's given me so much more confidence in be able to speak my mind and be able to write down and perform the poetry I've been keeping hidden in my little journal for the past six, seven years. Jewel plans to major in neuroscience and the literary arts at Brown University. She says she might go to med school or get her PhD, but her dream is to be a scientific researcher. Stephanie Serna, Case at 12 News. 520, 76 degrees. Let's check on the roadways. You were very busy yesterday, Nick. Hopefully today it's a little bit easier out there. Yeah, it's been a nice start to the morning for me, Leslie. Things are looking good out there right now, especially for you if you are going to work this morning. Uh, the roadways are cleared up. There's no accidents right now. Construction is fairly minimal, so things are looking good. Look at these drive times here. If you're on 1604 eastbound from US 281 to I-35, you got a nine-minute commute. And back westbound, right, like you say Ikea I-35, back to 281, eight minutes. So that's really good times. Taking a look outside of the Trans Guide, 10 and Ralph Bear looking really good right now. I did see another traffic convoy go through right 10 again, but it just seems like they're passing through. 10 at Bernie Stage is looking good. 35 at uh, 1103. Uh, very, very quiet there. At 35 at FM 3009, looking good. And uh, 35 at Schwab Road, looking good. And first of all, take a look at this beautiful Okay, the bougainvillea is blooming. That is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, all the water we've been having lately, all the rain has been helping out the grass, the plants, and we're going to be getting some more tonight, maybe too much in some places. All right, we've got a lot of clouds this morning. Everything appears to be still dry out there. There may be a little sprinkle or two, so just be on the lookout for that. But I haven't seen anything. I've uh, been looking at some of the trans guide cameras with Nick. I haven't seen anything uh, on showing up on the roads as of yet. Temperatures are in the uh, low to mid 70s, so almost 10 degrees above normal in many cases. There's a lot of humidity out there, so this is doing two things. Uh, setting the stage for potentially some heavy rain. This humidity is going to get squeezed out. Plus, it makes the atmosphere that much more unstable. And so that's what uh, is going to set the stage also for potentially severe storms later on this afternoon as well as tonight. So here's a computer model which I think is handling this whole situation very well. By this afternoon, there may actually be a couple of thunderstorms trying to pop up around the area. Uh, if anything, they're going to be few and far between. If anything does pop up, though, they can very easily become strong to severe with uh, some high winds and some hail. Then we go into this evening and we're going to see a few more showers and thunderstorms popping up around here. Then it's into the uh, nighttime hours about probably mid evening, eight, nine o'clock and overnight into early tomorrow morning. We're going to get this line of showers and thunderstorms to pop up here, and that's what's going to be producing some not only potentially heavy rain. Now, the good thing is, is that it's going to be a fast mover, so it's not as though these storms are just going to sit in one spot and dump a whole lot of rain. Now, despite that, we're still going to see some widespread rainfall totals uh, estimates anywhere from, uh, say, one to three inches of rain. Then you, obviously you're going to get some heavier pockets on top of that. This this is going to be up through about, uh, say, sunrise tomorrow morning, and then things are going to start to clear out. Most of that's going to be out of the area by probably about the time the sun comes up or just after that, and we'll still have some clouds hanging around here, a little sunshine left over in the afternoon, maybe a thunderstorm trying to pop up, and that's going to be the same situation on into Sunday as well. There is the chance for the severe storms, and this is actually starting late this afternoon with that slight risk, and this covers most of the uh, western two-thirds of our viewing area right along the I-35 corridor out to the west. So again, high winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats with this on top of the heavy rain threat that we're going to be seeing in the overnight hours. So today, 
We'll be up to 84 at noon, warm and humid, basically just cloudy skies. A peak or two of sunshine is going to be possible today, but I think we just stay pretty much on the cloudier side. And then later on this afternoon, a couple of thunderstorms are going to be popping up, and some of those may become strong even this afternoon. Then it's tonight when we're going to start to see some of the heavy rain move into the area, and that's going to be from west to east. And again, about mid-evening, 8, 9 o'clock, up through roughly... The wee hours tomorrow morning up through about sunrise tomorrow morning and then it's going to be moving off to the east. We'll make it up to 82 degrees tomorrow, so we are going to be staying on the, the cool side of things. We'll see some sunshine in the afternoon. Still maybe a stray storm tomorrow afternoon as well as on Sunday. And then after that, we've got a nice uh, stretch of weather into the first part of next week. Leslie, Mark. Thank you, Mike. We're at 524, 76 degrees. Coming up next in your morning spotlight, a look at how Hollywood is remembering the late, great Jim Henson, who passed away 30 years ago this weekend. No matter how hard we worked, we had fun because of Jim. It all came from Jim, all of it. Frank Oz and three other legendary Muppeteers are remembering the late, great Jim Henson. Saturday, the 30th anniversary of Henson's death, they'll do a live-streamed Q&A, sharing memories and insights. It's also a fundraiser for those on the front lines dealing with COVID-19. You can register for the live stream at MuppetGuysTalking.com slash Jim. The people who are benefiting from MPTF are the ones who rarely see the spotlight. You're not going to see them on the cover of a magazine. But without them, this industry stops. A galaxy of stars is turning out to support Hollywood's backbone. The Motion Picture and Television Fund supports entertainment industry workers, especially those working behind the scenes who fall on hard times. It's holding a star-studded benefit for its COVID-19 emergency relief fund, for Hollywood workers hit hardest by not being able to work during the pandemic. The virtual event starts Friday night at 9 Eastern on the fund's YouTube page, info at mptf.com. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Right now it's 528, rather 529, 76 degrees. Coming up in our next half hour, why the World Health Organization says the coronavirus might never go away and why a vaccine will take a while to produce. Plus new fallout this morning after a whistleblower testifies the U.S. still doesn't have a concrete plan to stop the coronavirus pandemic. Good morning. We made it to Friday. It's May 15th. Hey, welcome to your Friday, everybody. Now we just have to make it to Saturday because tonight we could be in for some potential bad storms. Yeah, Mike says the next 24 hours could be very interesting. When could the biggest line move through the area, Mike? It's going to be later on tonight. It's going to start out in western parts of the hill country, uh, say 8, 9 o'clock. We'll start to see it really firing up, and then it's going to move through in the overnight hours up through roughly sunrise tomorrow. This morning, we're starting off, got some clouds out there. It is very warm, very humid. We're in the mid, uh, low to mid 70s. Uh, normal low temperature is 67 right now, so just about 10 above that. And mold is on the high side. It's probably going to be staying high for the next uh, couple of days. Now, as far as today, 84 at noon, 89 high temperature today. So it's going to be hot. It's going to be humid. We're going to have a lot of clouds around today. A couple of storms are going to be popping up later on this afternoon. And even though the odds of rain are not great this afternoon, uh, some of those storms could be on the strong to potentially severe side. Then it's going to be as that line of storms moves across the area later on tonight when we're going to see a better opportunity for not only heavy rain, widespread, maybe two, three inch rain amounts, some heavier totals on top of that, but also high winds and hail that would be in the overnight hours. And also take note how, if you recall from yesterday, the line between the green and the yellow, the marginal to slight risk was back out through about the midway through the hill country. So Storm Prediction Center did expand that line eastward to include the I-35 corridor. And again, a couple of these later on this afternoon, but mainly tonight, overnight hours in through roughly sunrise tomorrow. After that, not bad looking for the weekend. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Thanks, Mike. Hello, good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Friday morning. Well, if you're on the way to work right now, a lot of green on the screen, which means there's really no accidents to report at all. Very little construction around the city. Things are looking good right now. Let's take a look outside of the trans guide. 410 and 151 looking good. Traffic still very light over there. Um, and the uh, west side, 35 and 1604, up more northeast. Very light. I don't see the construction there anymore. 281 and Nakoma looking really good. And let's see what else we have here. 281 and Winding Way looking even better. 
All right, everyone, well, please have a uh, safe trip to work, wear that seatbelt, and go that speed limit. Mark Leslie, back to you. In your morning headlines, there are at least 302,000 coronavirus deaths reported worldwide, with more than 85,000 of them here in the U.S., according to Johns Hopkins University. And as CNN's John Lawrence reports, health officials say the threat is not fading. The coronavirus might be here for good. The World Health Organization says it's possible COVID-19 may never go away, and there's no word on when a vaccine will be ready. We can't give an answer to that because it takes time to do these studies, these clinical trials, to see if it's safe and effective. This comes as most of the U.S. is lifting at least some restrictions and reopening businesses. There needs to be a balance of minimizing the risk of resurgence, protecting people while getting the economy going back up back again. It's not public health or economy. It has to be both. On Thursday, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention published guidelines to help with the process. But there's not a lot of specifics here, and some of it seems very ad hoc, you know, sort of do it if you can. If you can't, you know, it's OK. I was surprised by this. The CDC also issued a warning about a multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children, or MISC, which may be associated with COVID-19 infection. Just like its name suggests, it's a disease that can lead to severe inflammation in the body and even in the heart, in which case it can be deadly. The syndrome has been reported across Europe and in at least 18 states. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Another pharmacy chain opening coronavirus test sites in parts of the country starting today. CVS says it will open more than 50 test sites and drive throughs in five states. The pharmacy highlights that's just the beginning. Over the next two weeks, they plan to announce hundreds of additional sites around the country. The company expects to have up and running up to 1,000 locations by the end of May. The Mall of America will partially reopen June 1st in compliance with Minnesota's new safety protocols. The mall is the largest shopping and entertainment complex in North America. It has more than 520 stores and restaurants and draws visitors from around the world. It shut down March 17th for the pandemic. All dining venues and attractions will remain closed, but food establishments can offer curbside and delivery service. Starbucks wants a break. The coffee company's COO sent a letter to landlords of stores all over the country recently asking for a break on rent for a year starting June 1st. He says COVID-19 has hurt sales. The company just announced it would reopen 90 percent of its nearly 9,000 company-owned stores in the U.S. by early June. Since last year, Starbucks quarterly earnings have fallen by half. Nearly half the people who work for Carnival Cruise Lines in Florida are losing their job. The cruise line just announced <clears throat> massive job cuts. The pandemic has hit the cruise industry very hard, and there's no clear answer as to when the major lines will return to sea. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's no sale order is currently set to expire, but not until July 24th and could be extended. 537, 76 degrees. Bill ahead as airlines try to get customers back on planes, Southwest has a great deal right now you may want to take advantage of. Plus more on what an ousted vaccine development chief is saying about the U.S.'s response to the pandemic so far. And taking it outside with live cam. <clears throat> <laughs> we'll be right back. Five forty, back to Washington. A new fallout from the whistleblower who issued a warning about the coronavirus. It comes as lawmakers are expected to vote on a new economic relief package today. ABC's Inez de la Quatera has more. This morning, the Trump administration firing back, slamming the scientist turned whistleblower who once oversaw coronavirus vaccine production. You know, yet another attack on President Trump and uh, just disproven, unfounded allegations. Dr. Rick Bright testifying before Congress, claiming he was forced out of his job after raising concern about the administration's response to the pandemic. Without better planning, 2020 could be the darkest winter in modern history. Bright says early inaction by the government cost lives, especially those of health care workers, describing an email he got from a manufacturer saying their supply of N95 medical masks was decimated. He said, we're in deep the world is, and we need to act. And I pushed that forward to the highest levels I could in HHS I got no response. In the meantime, the House plans to vote today on a new economic relief package. The $3 trillion bill has little chance of moving forward in the Senate. Even if passed, the White House says President Trump would veto the bill, calling it an ideological wish list for Democrats. 
Mitch McConnell isn't ruling out another stimulus plan down the road. Republicans are demanding language that limits liability for companies that reopen. Inez De La Quatera, ABC News, Washington. Time check now, 541, 76 degrees. Up next, why a local family decided it was their responsibility to help local university students affected by the pandemic shutdown. 544, during the pandemic, we have heard many, many stories of people stepping up to help others. A Seguin family opened up their doors and their home to give Texas Lutheran University students a place to stay after their campus shut down. Tiffany Huertas shares their story. All of the plans that we had for like our senior year have just gone out the windows. In March, Texas Lutheran University senior Delaney Chambers learned she would need to move off campus due to COVID-19. A spokesperson for the university says they asked students to move off campus for health and safety reasons. Delaney says that day she received a text message from her mom. It just said, how can I help you and your friends? Two of Delaney's friends from school are from out of town and had nowhere to go. So on March 30th, they moved in with her family in Seguin. It's not like we've had two strangers move in. It's just like we've gained two new family members. Sophomore Johnny Samaniego Lozano and senior Daniel Saunders say they are grateful for everything the family has done for them. I can't be any more grateful for how much they've just inspired me. With this family, it's we always want to be around each other. We always want to have just each other's company, each other's energy. During the pandemic, the students continued to learn online and created many memories with the Chambers family too. They're all creative geniuses, all of them. And you just, there's never a dull moment. There's very few quiet moments, but it's always fun. It's all, they've actually inspired me to start writing again. The Chambers family even threw Delaney and Daniel a surprise graduation. We do know that not everybody can do this. Not everybody's blessed and capable of doing this, but everybody can do something to help. You know, we are Americans and we're Texans and we always come together in times of need. In your morning consumer headlines, a chest of drawers sold at many of the nation's largest retailers can tip over and injure, even kill children. The piece of furniture is made by Hodetta and weighs 84 pounds. It stands a bit more than three feet tall. Walmart, Amazon, Wayfair, Home Depot, and other retailers sold more than 26,000 of them between July 2017 and April of this year. Owners should check the Consumer Product Safety Commission for contact information for a free anchoring kit or refund. Well, it might be the most dramatic statement from a U.S. airline during the coronavirus pandemic. Delta says by fall, it will have about 7,000 more pilots than it needs. An internal memo says Delta is closing its pilot base in Cincinnati. It is also permanently grounding all of its Boeing 777 jets. Those are the used for the long international flights. About a third of Delta's employees are already on unpaid leave. In the future, Delta says it will be a smaller airline with fewer employees. Meanwhile, Southwest Airlines offering one-way fares starting at $49. The domestic airline announced the sale this week and covers travel between May 26th through August 31st. We'll also double frequent flyer points during that time. Promotion comes as airlines struggle to fill seats during the pandemic. 547. Let's check on the roadways once again and see how your traffic's looking on this Friday. Yeah, it's, things are looking good right now. If you're, if you're heading to work this morning, expect a smooth ride. You got time to stop, put gas, get food. Things are looking good out there right now. No major accidents. Look at these drive times. Northwest side of 35 to 1604, 11 minutes. And uh, if you're on 10 eastbound from the northwest side of 1604 to 35, 13 minutes. Still really good times. Taking a look outside, 35 in Schwab Road looking good up there. 10 at Medical, traffic still very light. 410 at Calabra looking great. And 90 at Medio Creek looks like we got a little bit of construction there still. But uh, we hopefully that clears up by 6 o'clock. And 151 at 410 looking great. Thank you, Nick. And if we time it right, Mike's going to sneeze. Right uh oh, uh, look at the light. Purple horse, Get it over purple with. horse. It was right there, didn't <laughs> Anyway. Um, Jump at him, Nick. Scare him. You know, <laughs> that's for Hick. Taser. No, yeah, that's, that's for Hick. Hick. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. But we still want to see him do yeah, that. Yeah, I still really want to see <laughs> yeah, that. That did be fun to watch. <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> Dad, look at this picture. I love this one. And Mike's like, look over here. Look over here. Be distracted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Squirrel. Actually, gecko. 
because at the bottom of your screen, oh, yeah, you see a little guy who's driving along, and all of a sudden a gecko pops up on the windshield. And said, went along about five miles, hitched a ride the whole time. Better than a snake fall on your car, as far well, as I'm that, concerned. Well, but that, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, and they said they dropped it off in a nice little area after that. Hmm. Well, hmm. Wasn't being a backseat driver. Mm -mm, just a hitchhiker. Anyway, uh, nice start this morning. It is very warm and humid, though. Be on the lookout for maybe a little mist or a sprinkle around the area. Haven't seen any reports of anything. Nothing is showing up on radar, but with all the humidity out there, we've got warm temperatures in the 70s, about 10 degrees above normal, and uh, dew point temperatures, upper 60s and low 70s. I mean, this is like middle of the summer kind of humidity there with dew points at 73 at Randolph. So there could be a little bit of mist or a sprinkle around the area this morning. Now we go into computer model and it's kind of broad brushes things a little bit this morning. But again, just kind of taking into account that there may be something out there by this afternoon. Then a couple of showers and a few thunderstorms are going to be popping up around the area and the odds of rain this afternoon are not that great. However, if something does pop up because the atmosphere is very unstable, very volatile right now, some of those could be on the strong to potentially severe side, high winds and hail. That's going to be the situation into the early evening hours just after dinner time, and then we start to see by about news time tonight, roughly going to get going probably nine o'clock this this evening. And by news time, we're going to start to see this line of showers and thunderstorms form up and start to work its way to the east. And that's going to be the situation in the overnight hours and early tomorrow morning. And this is going to be basically a nighttime event from again, roughly nine o'clock tonight, starting out there in our western counties and going through basically sunrise tomorrow morning because with this computer model and a lot are in agreement with this, it moves on through here. It's going to be a pretty quick mover, which is good as far as uh, the rainfall potential, because not only do we have the threat for some severe weather, but there's also the chance for some heavy rain. So here's the severe outlook and Storm Prediction Center did move this to the east somewhat. The slight risk for again, high winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats, but I think the biggest threat also, and this would continue on into tomorrow morning, but also there is the chance for some heavy rain. And as far as some of the uh, <laughs> Uh, model outlooks here. As you can see on the scale, widespread about say two to three inches of rain. Then we'll have some heavier pockets on top of that. And again, it's going to come down. The storms aren't going to just sit in one spot, but they're going to dump a lot of rain very, very quickly. And that'll be in the overnight hours. 84 degrees today at noon. Cloudy skies. Um, I don't think we'll see any showers popping up by noon, but then later on this afternoon, a couple of those storms may be popping up around the area. Again, the rain chances are not great but the chance that things could become severe, that's uh, going to be fairly easy to do. Then tonight is when we start to see that line of storms move on through here. It's going to form up in the western hill country and work its way across the area in the window of opportunity, basically 9 o'clock tonight to about sunrise tomorrow morning. And we'll see some sunshine in the afternoon. It won't be bad tomorrow and Sunday. A couple of scattered showers first to next week looks pretty good. But again, tonight things may get a little bit uh, on the heavy side, so if you can Make sure your car's in the garage. It's going to be a good idea. Okie dokie pokey. We will put the hail plan into place. Yep. Thank Are you, you going to put the um, mattresses on your truck again? Oh, that was for my, my kid's truck, yeah. So his is the only one that actually fits in the garage right now. Mine's two feet too long. But so any mattresses, mattresses on your truck? I don't know. I, need to, I guess I need to go to make a, make a run. Maybe so. Maybe so. You need to wrap make it a in big bubble wrap. out of pool noodles. A pool big noodles? cover out of pool noodles. Wow, I've that's a, that before. a lot pool of pool noodles. noodles. I gotta, I'll gotta. i figure something out. 552, 76 degrees. Or zip time together. I've seen people do that. Yeah. That's Up next. That's with this. <laughs> more in a new video game that puts players in the role of an astronaut trying to survive a lunar disaster. And it features no violent combat. Lottery numbers pick three, zero, eight, seven, fireball nine. Daily four numbers eight, nine, zero, two with a fireball nine. Your cash five numbers, 10, 12, 19, 26, 30. Texas two-step numbers, 3, 8, 11, 30 with a bonus ball of 29. Three, two, Step into the boots of a lone astronaut far from home in Deliver Us the Moon. It's about a bleak future where we have depleted resources and the world is really, uh, it, you know, sort of breaking down. And so we send an astronaut out into space to kind of uh, connect us to this energy source that we're getting from the moon. And the challenge as a player is to just survive. 
The game tests players' puzzle and problem-solving skills and features no combat. It's about space travel and then you land on the moon and then you've got to deal with connecting the space and, and uh, all the pitfalls that an individual would have to deal with when faced with a big challenge like that. It's quite remarkable. This message will be the last you'll ever get from me. I think space is such a scary thing anyways. And I think anytime filmmakers or storytellers sort of uh, uh, just build on that and give us a sense of the reality and the rigors of, of uh, surviving in space like this game does, um, you're far ahead of the curve. Leveling up in Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Deliver us to the moon. Well, still ahead in our next hour, GMSA, the murder hornet may sound scary, but there are other animals causing more harm in Texas right now. We'll check out some of the invasive species that our Parks and Wildlife Department are fighting. That's coming up here on GMSA. And another look at traffic with Officer Nick Silis from SAPD. And Mike's talking about those chances of strong to severe storms in the next 24 hours. We'll be right back. How will the upcoming elections in Texas look like? Will voters be allowed to mail in their vote if they fear stepping out in the middle of a global pandemic? Or is voter fraud too much of a concern? The details just ahead on GMSA. Uh, in local news, a man who was hit by eight train cars is expected to survive. We'll tell you about that incident in just a few minutes. And taking you outside with live cam. We are under the gun tonight. Severe storms are in the forecast. Mike standing by with details. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Friday, May 15th. Welcome to your Friday, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us. It's pretty calm out there right now. Not going to be the case later on today. We are opening up the window for a chance of strong to severe storms, and Mike is here, and you guys are going to be up all night tracking all this, right, Mike? Yeah, that's the, the basically the window when the, the heaviest line of storms is going to be moving on through here from about mid-evening, call it to 8, 9 o'clock, developing out to the west and then working its way across through about sunrise tomorrow morning. So it is moving along. Uh, it's kind of sped up in time a little bit and moving along quicker, and that's going to help out as far as the chance for any sort of uh, uh, maybe some heavy rain. Now, if I can get uh, these pictures to change, there we go. Uh, 72 and hello to 76 in town and temperatures are about 10 degrees above normal. A lot of humidity. It is kind of a tranquil morning though, and I haven't seen any any rain around the area. No uh, showers, anything like that showing up around here this morning. Now, later on this afternoon, we do have a chance for uh, a couple of showers around here. Love computers. They're so nice. A couple of showers and even a few thunderstorms. I'll just talk my way through this one and a high temperature in the upper 80s. Now, as far as uh, number wise, we're going to be seeing uh, temperatures get up into roughly the mid 80s by noon with basically cloudy skies. If there's a sprinkle this morning, fine. And then later on this afternoon, we're going to make it, like I said, up into the upper 80s. We'll see a couple of thunderstorms trying to develop this afternoon. The odds of rain are not great this afternoon, but if anything does pop up, it could be strong or potentially severe with high winds and hail being the biggest threats. Then we go into uh, tonight and that's when things are really going to start to uh, ramp up and we do have that chance for uh, some severe weather and the storm prediction center does have us under the slight risk for uh, some severe storms starting later on today, but again, mainly tonight overnight into tomorrow. Going to talk more about that. I'm going to give my computer a good swift kick and we'll go from there. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Solis. Anything big going on this morning, Nick? Nah, not, not right now, Mike. Completely opposite of yesterday. Things are looking real smooth right That's now. That's good. Yeah, if you are on the roadway right now, heading to work, expect a very smooth ride. Things are looking great this Friday morning, which is always good news to hear. Okay, look at this. Look at these drive times. 151 eastbound from 1604 to 90, nine minutes. And if you're eastbound 90 uh, to 1604 to 30, 35, 11 minutes. So really good time still there. All right, taking a look at Transguide, 35 in Schwab Road, looking good. 410 at Calabria, looking great. Sorry, it kind of rotated me real fast there. Uh, 35, oh, I'll just do it again. 90 Medeo Creek, looking good. No construction, it looks like there. It's all cleared up. And uh, 151 and 410, looking even better. Well. I hope everyone has a great start to their day. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Well, new this morning, San Antonio police have confirmed that a standoff on the northeast side is over. We've been following this story since we first told you about it yesterday on GMSA. Officers responded to a man shooting a gun at his neighbor's property in the 4,000 block of Sunrise Creek. That's near Ben Zingelman and North Foster Road. 
A police sergeant told KSAT this morning that the man inside has been taken into custody. We will work to have an update from Katrina Weber in our next half hour. A man is behind bars after he allegedly rammed his car into another woman's vehicle. According to the affidavit, the incident happened this past Monday. Police say 30-year-old Renee Peralta followed the victim after she left her house around 1.30 in the morning. That's when he allegedly aggressively and intentionally rammed his car into hers. Peralta and the victim have a child together but do not live together. The victim suffered injuries to rib, neck, back, and arm. Peralta is facing charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Well, San Antonio police say a man who was run over by eight train cars is expected to survive. All of this happening last night around 10 on the city's east side near the intersection of Palmetto and West Fall. Police tell us the victim was hurt during the incident, but his injuries are not life-threatening. He was taken to the hospital, and as we said, he is expected to recover. An Amber Alert we told you about yesterday on GMSA for 14-year-old Willow Searmans from Northeast Texas has been discontinued. That's according to the Van Zandt County Sheriff's Office. They discontinued the alert late last night. We're still waiting to hear more information about why they canceled it and if Willow, Willow made it back home safely. COVID-19 is making people afraid to cast their ballot in the upcoming elections across Texas. Texas Democratic Party asking for mail-in voting to be expanded, but the global pandemic is not covered on the current Texas election code. Alicia Badera is live with more about the feud for mail-in voting. Good morning, Alicia. Good morning. Well, this will definitely be an ongoing battle. The Texas Democratic Party has filed this lawsuit and they're challenging those current limitations. But the big pushback for these mail in ballots is the fear and that concern over voter fraud. Right now, under the current election code here in Texas, it allows anyone to apply to vote by mail, but you must have one of the following reasons to qualify. You have to be 65 years or older, be disabled, be out of the country on election day, be confined in jail, but fear that your health is threatened due to a global pandemic isn't a valid reason listed. Civil rights organizations say they're concerned about the impact this could have on voter turnout this year. Here in Bear County, Commissioner's Court has passed a resolution that would allow application for mail-in ballots due to the pandemic. But critics are concerned, including Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. He actually filed a brief to prevent fraud through the expansion of mail-in voting. Again, that's the biggest concern, fraud. Um, and today at 1230, we know that the Texas Democratic Party will be holding a press conference. And what they're going to do, they're going to update on their continued fight for mail-in voting and giving that option to Texas, Texans in case they really, really fear that their health could be at risk due to COVID-19. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. A new round of COVID-19 testing continues this morning, but the amount of tests available will remain the same. Only 150 tests will be administered at the Southside Lions Community Center on Hiawatha Street and the Claude Black Community Center on East Commerce. Last week, Metro Health said they plan to increase the amount of testing at walk-up sites. Both pop-up sites will be open today and tomorrow beginning at 10 a.m. You do not need to show any symptoms. Testing is free and an appointment is not required. Well, we're not going to tell you something you don't already know. Social distancing can lead to antsy kids at home. And adults. Yes. <laughs> Hemisphere is offering virtual programs for families who can't play at Yanaguana Garden during this time. Sarah Costa joins us live from home with some of those options. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Leslie. This is all part of Hemisphere's hashtag park it at home program where they're providing virtual sing-alongs, virtual readings, and arts and crafts activities. So let's get started talking about the super fun Saturday series. It's going on for eight weeks. These are quality virtual learning programs with children's recording artist Andy Rue and the Andy Rooniverse. He uses music and storytelling to teach social skills and teamwork. These are every Saturday at 11 a.m. on the Hemisphere Facebook page through June 27th. Now, for a weekday activity, you can register for a free virtual story time with Hemisphere volunteer Miss Kim. Miss Kim reads a pre-selected book via a private Zoom meeting every Tuesday at 10 a.m. to the first 100 families who register online. The books are paired with science, technology, 
an art related activity. Just take a look at your screen for the Park It at Home program information. Those virtual sing alongs are Saturdays at 11 a.m. going on until June 27th. And you can check those out on the Hemisphere Facebook page. And those virtual readings are every Tuesday at 10 a.m. with the links on hemisphere.org slash park it at home. And of course, you can find all this information right now. If you just head on over to ksat.com in the KSAT Kids section. Reporting live from home, Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Leslie. Thanks, Sarah. Right now, we are just about 6.09, 76 degrees. The murder hornet may sound scary, but actually there are other animals causing more harm in Texas right now. We're going to have some of the invasive species that our Parks and Wildlife Department are fighting. Graduating class of 2020 has seen challenges unlike many other before. But there's still some great grads worthy of recognition around San Antonio. Find out more about an SAISD valedictorian after the break. And taking you outside with live cam. Once again, our meteorologists are on it. We're going to get some severe storms overnight, but we've got you covered. Good morning and welcome back. Just about 613. The graduating class of 2020 is graduating in the face of unique challenges this year. And in our great graduate series, we're featuring outstanding graduates from across the city. Today, Stephanie Serna introduces us to Jewel Medell, the valedictorian for SAISD's Young Women's Leadership Academy, and tells us she's also been working hard to be a role model for her younger sister. I've been going to YWLA for four years. Jewel Medell is at the top of her class at the Young Women's Leadership Academy. She's in the National Honor Society, the Young Poets Society, volleyball, basketball, track, and she's received a full scholarship to Brown University. I'm gonna be the first college graduate in my family, so and I wanna really be a role model for my younger sister because I know that it's just us two, us girls and the family and my mom. So just being able to be that role model for her is really important for me because I want her to know that if I can do it, she can do it. I'm very excited to see what the future will hold for her. Michelle Grajeda has been Jules' instructor for four different courses over the past four years, and she also heads the Young Poets Society. She tells us Joel goes beyond just earning a good grade. Since the moment that I first started interacting with her in my classroom, I could see her great insight, even at a young age, her ability to analyze complex texts and then apply them to the world around her. It's given me so much more confidence in be able to speak my mind, and be able to write down and perform the poetry I've been keeping hidden in my little journal for the past six, seven years. Jewel plans to major in neuroscience and the literary arts at Brown University. She says she might go to med school or get her PhD, but her dream is to be a scientific researcher. Stephanie Serna, Case at 12 News. Uh, wow. Full scholarship to an Ivy League school in Providence, Rhode Island. And first graduate in her family. That Unbelievable. is, I mean, to go to college in her family. That is fantastic. Congratulations, Jewel, and best of luck to you from everybody at GMSA. Very impressive. It looked like the roadways were getting pretty busy, Nick. Yes, they are. I, uh, I was putting up a graphic I just saw an accident right now, 90 eastbound at uh, South Zalzamora. I had just put it up there, and then when I clicked to put the show on, it erased. So sorry about that. But if you are going 90 eastbound right there at Zalzamora, there's an accident on the main lanes. Looks like a wrecker is on the way, and this one should be getting cleared up here pretty soon. All right, drive time. So eastbound 281 to 35, eight minutes. Westbound 1604 from 35 to 281, eight minutes as well. Those times are improving. Taking a look outside, 281 at Winding Way, looking really good. Traffic light to moderate, 35 at Flores. Traffic very light there, not bad at all. And uh, 10 West at 1604, got some life there. And those, no construction, regular vehicles, things are looking good. At 10 at La Quintera, looking even better. Thank you so much, Nick. Hi, Mike. Hello. How are you? Great. Good. Y'all are going to be really busy in the weather department later on tonight. Yeah, the potential is there for uh, kind of a rough evening. But uh, first of all, I, this, I think, is a fascinating picture. Have you ever seen this before? When what, what it looks it? like somebody went through the a tiller. Oh, yeah, I've seen that before. Uh, we go back to the shot real quick. Uh, From hogs. These hogs have torn up this field, haven't oh, wow. they? Wow. I saw that in somebody's yard one time. I was like, wow, I mean, you 
Corp your yard. No hogs went through there. Mm -hmm. It's amazing looking what yeah, those things like can do. Somebody drunk with a tiller went through there, but it's not a tiller. <laughs> exactly. So anyway, thanks very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Yeah, getting back to uh, this evening, it is going to, it's shaping up to be a, a rough evening and more on that in a second. It's a very warm, humid morning, kind of tranquil out there. Don't be surprised if there's a little bit of a sprinkle here or there. Haven't seen anything on any of the trans guide cameras. Nothing is being reported, but just with all this uh, humidity kind of getting pumped on in here with these dew points, measure moisture in the atmosphere well up into the upper 60s and low 70s. That's also helping to feed potential heavy rain, and then also it makes the atmosphere that much more unstable because even though humid air feels kind of heavy, it's actually much lighter than dry air, and so that's why uh, the atmosphere becomes volatile and unstable in a situation like this. So computer model has yeah, a couple of sprinkly showers around the area. But then later on this afternoon is when we may start to see a couple of these storms trying to pop up. The odds of rain this afternoon are not that great, but if anything does pop up, it could easily become strong and or severe. Then we go into the evening hours, and that's when we'll start to see more of these storms uh, kind of developing out there to the west. And this is about mid-evening, 8 o'clock. A couple hours after that is when it really starts to form up into this line and that will work its way. At least it does look like this thing is going to move fairly quickly. So it's not just going to sit in one spot, which would really, really obviously dump a lot of heavy rain. But despite that, yes, heavy rain is a potential with this. This is going to be moving through in the wee hours tomorrow morning, overnight into the wee hours and by Roughly by the time uh, folks are on the air, we're on the air tomorrow with uh, Good Morning San Antonio. And by sunrise, most all of this is going to be out of the area. And we should see a little bit of sunshine in the afternoon, perhaps even a leftover shower or two, a uh, thunderstorm trying to pop up. That's going to be the situation on Sunday. But after those storms move on through, it's going to be an okay weekend. Not as nice as last weekend, but still not bad. Now, there is the severe threat. And this actually begins late this afternoon, and this would be for high winds and hail are going to be the biggest uh, threats with these storms moving on through and even tonight. Also take note that the Storm Prediction Center moved that slight risk area to the east. Yesterday it was cutting through about midway through the hill country and now it's moved off. They've expanded it to the east somewhat. And as far as rainfall potential, we're looking at uh, on the graph right here. The purple area is about two to three inches, so a good chunk. Some of the hill country may be one to two inches, but along the 35 corridor east of there, um, some widespread two to three inch rainfall amounts can't be ruled out, and then you could have some heavier downpours on top of that. And again, that's going to be late tonight into the first part of the day tomorrow. 84 today at noon. Cloudy skies, basically cloudy skies, a couple of peaks of sunshine thrown on in there. And then this afternoon, a couple of thunderstorms are going to try and pop up. And the odds of rain are not that great this afternoon. But if something pops up, it could become strong or potentially severe. And then that's really going to start to ramp up once we get into tonight. And about 8, 9 o'clock is when we'll start to see those developing out in hill country. And it's going to work its way across overnight into tomorrow morning. Heavy rain and the severe potential is there. Then we'll be up to 82 degrees. So on the cool side, actually, tomorrow, a little bit of sunshine in the afternoon. A couple of stray thunderstorms, same thing on Sunday. So not a bad looking weekend. First part of next week is shaping up uh, pretty nice. Good looking start to the week next week. Good deal. Just get yeah. through tonight. Download the app. Keep track of things, too. Free KSAT Weather Authority app and have your notifications activated. 619, 76 degrees. Well, the murder hornet made headlines around the country, but Texas has a bigger fish to fry. Actually, the state has bigger mussels to fry. We're going to learn about some of the invasive species impacting parks across the Lone Star State. Here's your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a Polar Pop. We are Circle K. Sometimes the challenges of today's world make it tough to take care of yourself. That's why you can rely on Nature's Bounty to give you the support you need to stay motivated, keep active, and sleep well. Add a little more health to your day with Nature's Bounty. They are the heroes, the helpers, working on the front lines. And here's one small way that you can help them in return. Complete your 2020 census today. 
2020 census data helps communities plan funding for hospitals, clinics, and emergency services across the country. An accurate count helps public health officials know who is at risk, and first responders identify the resources they need to protect our communities. Complete your census at 2020census.gov and help shape our future. Let's be honest, quitting smoking is hard. Like quitting every Monday hard. Quitting feels so big. So try making it smaller and you'll be surprised at how easily starting small can lead to something big. Start stopping with Nicorette. In this morning's GMA first look, the battle over the beach. Those surfboards again slapping into waves on some American shorelines. And with Memorial Day only a week away, authorities bracing for that deluge of people. In California, most beaches are open, but only to exercise and surfers. And to some folks, lifeguards running to a rescue might be hard to recognize. We're going to doff the full uh, isolation kit. We have gloves, masks, goggles. We're going to do uh, everything that we normally would do with just a couple extra layers of uh, protective equipment. We're going to have different tan lines this summer for sure. <laughs> Rescuers on beaches told to assume everyone they come into contact with is COVID positive. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll tell you how lifeguards are adjusting to this new normal and what you need to know to stay safe this summer. With your GMA First Look, I'm Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. Well, last week, the Asian giant hornet, or murder hornet, made headlines as the invasive species was seen for the first time in the U.S. Here in Texas, a task force was created to make sure this aggressive species doesn't show up here. But Texas already has a long list of invasive species that are causing some big problems. Eric Hernandez spoke with Texas Parks and Wildlife about the issue and gives us a closer look at what animals are causing the most problems. Zebra mussels, feral pigs, and red imported fire ants. These animals are not native to Texas, and Texas Parks and Wildlife say they are some of the most invasive to the state. As far as wildlife, um, you know, again, some of these species that can be introduced um, may have habits that um, really deter a lot of our natural species from just even breeding, raising their young. Uh, they, again, may be competing for the same food source. On the Texas Invasives website, you can get a closer look at the plants and wildlife that are of most concern. And right at the top of the page, a statement about zebra mussels, which have invaded several Texas lakes and could take over all freshwater sources in the state. They, they can spread very quickly and very easily, and they outcompete a lot of our other um, aquatic invertebrates. And unfortunately, they can also adhere to any type of structure. And we all know about the state's feral pig problem, but did you know that feral cats and domesticated cats are of concern as well? And as an agency, of course, we try to advocate that um, citizens not allow their pets to free roam because they do impact our songbird populations as well as many other wildlife species. Texas Parks and Wildlife is working hard to curb these populations and want everyone to understand the importance of keeping these invasive species in check. To allow it to continue to um, prosper, then eventually, you know, 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, as we see with feral hogs, you know, 30 years down the road, we are having a major impact across the state. For a look at other invasive species or plants in the state, just head to our website, ksat.com. We have a list up for you now. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Your time now is 627, 76 degrees outside. There is a continuing debate over how to cast ballots during the pandemic here in Texas. Alicia Pereira was giving us the latest on mail-in ballots and that uh, feud over the validity of those coming up in the election cycle. And when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. In the next half hour of GMSA, find out how one family is using their virtual lemonade stand as a teaching and giving tool. COVID-19 has made some Texans fear voting in person. Will they be allowed to vote by mail or is voter fraud too much of a concern? The details just ahead on GMSA. The federal government releasing new guidelines to safely reopen the economy. I'm Inez de la Quatera in Washington and I'll have all the details coming up. All quiet on the South Texas front. Beautiful start to the day here in South Texas this morning, but get ready for heavy rain, high wind, and possible hail. Mike will get us updated on when that could happen as everybody rushes into place here. Good morning to you. It is Friday. It is May 15th.
Thanks for being with us this morning. Welcome to your Friday. Yeah, it's not nothing really going on this morning weather-wise, mm -hmm. but you have a lot to talk about in a little bit. Yesterday, you were really busy. How are the roadways looking today? I'm not too busy today, Leslie. Good. They're looking good. I mean, <laughs> no one's going to be busy out there. It's great. And he's smiling. That's a good sign. We may not be smiling by tomorrow morning, though. A very serious situation could be developing. Right. Later on tonight and then in the wee hours of tomorrow morning, probably by this time tomorrow, most mm -hmm. of this is going to be out of the area. Gone. But it's between about uh, mid-evening and sunrise tomorrow. Obviously, lots of clouds out there, and it is warm. It is very humid starting off this morning, mid upper or excuse me, low to mid 70s around the area. And the humidity is like what you'd find uh, about middle of summertime. Molds on the high side. And uh, we are going to see a couple of storms maybe popping up this afternoon. The chances of rain this afternoon are not great, but if something does pop up, it could be on the strong side because the atmosphere is uh, very volatile right now. We're going to be in the upper 80s. Then tonight, we're going to start to see a line of thunderstorms develop out in uh, the hill country, and that's going to work its way across the area. And that's going to produce some potentially heavy rain as well as potentially severe storms with high winds and hail being the biggest threats. And that's going to be through tomorrow morning, again, about sunrise, and it's going to be moving on out of here. And then uh, a couple of stray storms are possible in the afternoon. We'll be in the uh, low to mid 80s. That's going to be the situation on Sunday, too. So after we get past tomorrow morning, not a bad looking weekend. First part of next week looks OK. Storm Prediction Center does have the slight risk for severe storms, and they actually expanded this yellow area as compared to yesterday. It was cutting through the hill country. Now it is uh, including all of the I-35 corridor and then the marginal risk off to the east. So again, a couple of these uh, stronger storms, severe storms this afternoon, more likely tonight. More on that, a closer look at the weekend forecast coming up. Time savers traffic. So have you really had any accidents to talk about this morning? No, we've had two, Mike. Okay. Two, but you know, that's not that's not bad news out no. there. For everyone going to work this morning, two two accidents is pretty good. Right now, we've been working on one accident. It's going to be 90 eastbound at Zalzamora. Looks like this one's just about cleared up, so uh, don't, have to worry, don't have to worry about that. A lot of green there going east and westbound on 90, so that's good news if you have to go that way for work. Look outside of the Trans Guy 10 at Bernie Stage looking great. Uh, 35 at 1103, light traffic. Uh, 35 at 3009 light to moderate traffic. You know, those southbound lanes always get a little bit more uh, packed around uh, 7 o'clock. 35 in Schwab looking good and 35 and 37 looking great. Well, I hope everyone makes it to work safely and has a great day. Mark Leslie, back to you. Thank you, Nick. Well, a man has spent the night in jail after he allegedly spent all day holed up in an east side home. San Antonio police made the arrest hours after they began engaging in a standoff at a home on Sunrise Creek. Our Katrina Weber has an update from the Bear County Jail. And Katrina, this story actually you began following more than 24 hours ago. Do we have any idea how police brought that standoff to an end? We're still waiting for all of those details from San Antonio police, but a supervisor did tell me that the standoff ended with the arrest of the man who was inside that home. 19-year-old Ricardo Guerrero was taken into custody yesterday afternoon on two counts of deadly conduct with a firearm. Jail records show he was arrested at that home in the 4,000 block of Sunrise Creek where the trouble began. Ricardo, you know your side. You need to listen to me. Come out with your hands. Ricardo, as you just heard, was the name police were calling out over a loudspeaker yesterday morning, continuously pleading with the man inside that home to come out. Police say the trouble started late Wednesday night when someone fired off a gun hitting a neighbor's property. They say witnesses told them after firing those shots, the shooter barricaded himself inside his home, the same home where Guerrero later was arrested. That's what prompted police and SWAT officers to gather there, trying to convince that person to come out peacefully. Guerrero is being held on jail, in jail with his bond set at $30,000. Reporting live from the Bear County Jail, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. The upcoming elections have some Texans arguing over how they should vote amid the pandemic. Some fear their health is at risk due to COVID-19 and want to mail in their ballots. At the same time, others are concerned about voter fraud. Alicia Barreras live with Last time I did, and that was a big battle. Alicia, can Alicia? you hear us? 
Hey, Leslie, Mark, good morning. Well, the Texas Democratic Party is asking for mail-in voting to be expanded. And the reason that they want to do that is because they fear that Texans won't be able to step out because of COVID-19. And then that may affect voter fraud. But, of course, there's a big pushback because of another party saying that this could actually give more way for voter fraud. But we can expect more details on this later on today when the Texas Democratic Party hosts their Zoom, pro, uh, Zoom press conference at 1230 today. The Texas Democratic Party has filed lawsuits challenging the limitations currently in place, but the big pushback for expanding mail-in ballots is the concern for voter fraud. The current Texas election code allows anyone to apply to vote by mail, but you must have one of the following reasons to qualify. Be 65 years or older, be disabled, be out of the country on election day, or be confined in jail. Here in Bear County, Commissioner's Court has passed a res resolution that would allow application for mail-in ballots due to the pandemic, but critics are concerned, including Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton. He actually filed a brief to prevent fraud through the expansion of mail in voting. And the fact that concern for your health isn't listed is a concern for civil rights activists. Again, they think that if this doesn't change, if there isn't an expansion in mail-in voting, that voter turnout could be really affected here in Texas. Again, that press conference for the Texas Democratic Party is set to begin at 1230. And you you can, ex of course, expect updates from KSAT. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Back to you. Centers for Disease Control Prevention issuing new guidelines for reopening the country. Well, this comes as many states have already begun to do so. ABC's Anez de la Cuatera is in Washington with the latest. Good morning. After weeks of delay, the federal government is releasing new, more detailed guidelines on how businesses and states can safely reopen. Overnight, the CDC releasing new guidelines providing the most specific guidance yet from the federal government on how to safely reopen, recommending schools and camps stagger drop-offs and limit how often kids mix into groups, adding restaurants can reopen as long as they can encourage social distancing and offer flexible leave among employees. The guidance released after weeks of delay and after a top government scientist warned Congress about the dangers of reopening too quickly. The window is closing to address this pandemic because we still do not have a standard, centralized, coordinated plan to take our nation through this response. At least 45 states have already eased restrictions in some way. Georgia and Florida showing little to no surge in cases after their partial reopening. Parts of upstate New York reopening today. In Wisconsin, people flocking to bars and restaurants hours after the state Supreme Court overturned the governor's stay-at-home order. Today, the House will vote on another multi-trillion dollar stimulus package meant to help state and local governments. Republicans have declared it dead on arrival. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. Right now it is 639, 76 degrees coming up. We're going to chat with Mike some more about our chance for strong to severe storms later today and tonight. Also coming up. We've had to learn how to be extra creative during this pandemic. I'm Sarah Acosta. Coming up on GMSA, how one local family used a virtual lemonade stand to raise money for the San Antonio Food Bank. Six forty-two. During this time of pandemic, lemonade stands have been put on hold, but that wasn't the case for a family who started a virtual lemonade stand to use it as a teaching and a giving tool. Sarah Costa joins us live, introducing us to the Espinosas who use the funds that they raise to help the community. A great, inspiring story, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Leslie. They are such a precious family. And mom, Erica Espinosa, she actually lost her job during this coronavirus pandemic. But she says it's a blessing in disguise because she's been able to use the time to teach her children and also teach them how to give back to the community. Erica Espinosa, mother of three and five-year-old Andy and Aldis, has added teacher to her resume like the hundreds of thousands of parents across the country. While teaching the alphabet and getting to the letter L, she wanted to get creative while also teaching her children how to give back. I thought lemonade stand. Mm -hmm. However, with the times right now, it didn't seem really 
like the right thing to do. Um, but then I thought, hey, why don't we do it virtually? Their goal with the money raised to give back to the San Antonio Food Bank. There's pig kids that are going hungry right now. The family was blown away from the response to their Facebook post where they shared their virtual lemonade fundraiser. Says, okay, let's maybe make 200. That number shot to over $2,000 raised. So we created an assembly line. I always to like put all the packages. When we deliver them to, on their doorsteps, do you know what? They, they come out and they say they're, um, they're just happy. The Espinosas took it a step forward and donated the leftover goodie bags to local frontline medical workers. With such the you know outpour of donations, most people said, no, uh, we just want to donate, keep the lemonade. Um, so I just wanted to do something to kind of honor those people. Erica's husband, Adrian, proud of his family, calling his wife a rock star for taking teaching and giving to another level. Keeping the kids engaged, because as you can see, they're not the most engaged. Um, they get bored easily. So, you know, just uh, her doing all this stuff really was amazing. Thank you for our donating to, for, to our lemonade stand. Erica's husband, Adrian, said that his company, Horizon Therapeutics, he talked to them and they agreed to match whatever the family donated at $2,000. So now they have donated a total of $4,000 to the San Antonio Food Bank. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Aww, Leslie. Thank you. What a great story. Thank you, Sarah. Hey, Officer Nick Solis has some good news when it comes to time saver traffic. Oh, yeah. If you are heading to work <coughs> right now, expect a smooth ride. You have time to make a pit stop somewhere because there are no accidents out there to report. And construction seems like it's all but gone. So that's great. Uh, look at these drive times, 35, uh, if you're on 35 southbound from the northeast side of 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. And if you're on 35 northbound from the southwest side of 1604 to downtown, 11 minutes. So really good times there. And let's take a look outside again at the Trans Guide. 281 at Nakoma looking good. 281 in Winding Way, light to moderate traffic. No accidents there though, so it will be smooth. 35 at Flores looking really good downtown there. And what else do we have? Uh, west at Loop 1604, no more construction. Looks very good right now. 10 at La Quintera as well. As you can see, lots of clouds off in the distance. Haven't seen mm -hmm. any uh, Mr. Sprinkles around the area, though. I, I saw know. a little mist this morning, oh, but did? it okay. was... I did, too. It was so little, I barely wanted to even bring it up. As a matter of mm -hmm. fact, you're making me bring it up. And, that, <laughs> and that's just because there's so, so much humidity getting pumped on in here. So. I've kid, of course. Not Boy, old, old Glory's looking great behind you there, Mike. There's nothing more... <laughs> beautiful than a picture like this. That's you nice. know, you got the great yeah. sunrise or sunset in the background mm -hmm. and then, yeah, the flag just standing proud like that. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. Well, it is lightening up. The sun is uh, is up, but obviously it's behind uh, pretty good clouds. Notice that kind of haze there along the horizon there. We've got all that humidity and again, that's why there may be a little bit of mist out there and temperatures are about 10 degrees above normal. All this humidity kept getting pumped on in here. so. You know, it was humid yesterday. Now most areas are seeing dew points up above 70. And so that's when the humidity is almost on the, the oppressive side. As far as computer models, here's the, uh, the rapid update computer model. And this one, I think, does a very good job of showing what's going to be going on later on today. A couple of showers are possible around here, and maybe even one or two of them popping up later on this afternoon. The odds of rain this afternoon are not that great, but if something does pop up, it could be strong or potentially severe. And then later on tonight, about eight, nine o'clock is when this area of rain is going to start to get going out there in parts of the hill country, and that will work its way off to the east, switching to a different computer model. And all of them now seem to have about the same solution as far as the timing of this, as well as the movement, which is going to be moving through fairly quickly. One thing to take note of, and this model has kind of a broken line. Now, that doesn't mean we won't see a lot of heavy rain, but it seems to get reorganized once it moves to the east of I-35, and then that will continue on here. And so the window of opportunity is basically about mid-evening, 8, 9 o'clock, when these will start to fire up, other than something trying to pop up later on this afternoon. Through, it should be 
pretty much out of the area by roughly sunrise tomorrow morning. And then we'll just have a few uh, scattered showers trying to pop up in the afternoon as well as on Sunday afternoon, a scattered uh, shower thunderstorm or two. There is the risk for severe weather, not only this afternoon, but especially tonight. High winds and hail are going to be the biggest threats with this. And then on top of that, of course, we have the heavy rain threat and once again, I was talking about how everything kind of reforms, especially off to the east. This is where a lot of the uh, computer models have the majority of the rain with um, three, five inches of rain. Now, throughout the I-35 corridor, it's going to be widespread about two to three inches of rain. Now, there could be some heavier pockets on top of that. The good thing is, though, I said this system is moving through fairly quickly, so it's not just going to sit in one spot. Now, despite that, though, Obviously, there is going to be a lot of heavy rain around the area. 84 degrees today at noon, cloudy skies, and then later on this afternoon, 89 for high temperature. A couple of thunderstorms are going to try and pop up. Again, the odds of rain this afternoon are not great, but if something does pop up, it could be strong. Then we see that line of rain develop about mid-evening tonight, working through overnight in through the early morning hours tomorrow. Heavy rain and potentially severe storms. 82 for high temperature tomorrow, 87 Sunday. Straight shower thunderstorm in the afternoon. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday look pretty nice. Yeah, not bad. Not bad at all. And you guys have got it completely covered as far as the overnight shift goes in these storms. Yeah, and like we were saying last half hour, download the app because you can get all the alerts right there. If you want to check out radar on, for yourself, um, it's it's very simple to use. I, plus, I love the app. Yeah, I'll plus that's all the where time. you uh, post KSAT Connect pictures. Thank you, Mike. About 10 till right now, 76 degrees. Well, making sure that your children are learning the school readiness skills they need. Tomorrow on GMSA, tips for parents teaching at home during the pandemic. We're going to also check back in coming up here on GMSA with Officer Nick Solis from San Antonio Police about your morning commute. He's standing by with an update. Stick around. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the new recommendations from the CDC on how states can safely reopen. This as New York right here, the nation's hardest state, hit state, is taking its first small steps toward reopening and the dire warning from the nation's top vaccine expert. We will have the latest on all of that right here on Good Morning America. Well, new this morning, San Antonio police have confirmed that a standoff, which I'm over here, yes. right? Okay, thank you. Standoff on the northeast side is over. They arrested Ricardo Garano. Officers responded to a man shooting a gun at his neighbor's property in the 4,000 block of Sunrise Creek, which is near Ben Zingleman and North Foster Road. A police sergeant told KSAT this morning that the man inside has been taken into custody. We'll try to have an update from Katrina Weber later on this morning. It's about five till right now on your Friday morning. Let's check on the roadways one more time. Yeah, I think they're still looking good. No new accidents to report. Taking a look outside here, 35 and Schwab still looking good. 410 at Calabria going smooth, 35 and 42 going great. Um, and 90 at Medeo Creek, that construction looks about done. So please be safe today and have a uh, wonderful day and get to work safely. We got lots of clouds out there this morning, maybe a speck of mist. Don't be surprised if you uh, see that. And uh, temperatures are extremely warm. It's very warm and humid. We're about 10 degrees above normal. Now, a couple of uh, thunderstorms are going to try and pop up later on this afternoon. The odds of rain today are not that great, but any one of those could be on the strong side. And then tonight is when we're going to start to see heavy storms develop in the hill country about mid evening. And that line is going to be working its way across the area. There is the slight risk. Most of the areas under the slight risk for uh, severe storms, high winds and hail, and then also heavy rain on top of that. That's going to be overnight into the early morning hours. So by about this time tomorrow morning, most all of the rain is going to be out of here. It's kind of a fast moving system. Then we'll see a little bit of uh, clearing and maybe a stray thunderstorm or two. But uh, of course, we'll have updates. Uh, Justin will have it later on this morning as more information comes in on this and then tonight and uh, download the KSAT weather app as well so you can keep updated. Mike, for folks that are just now kind of catching the end of the newscast here, what's the biggest severe weather threat for this storm, particularly tomorrow morning? Hail, high winds, and then now it's not severe, but heavy rain. Okay. Also. All right, thanks very Got much. It. And thank you everybody for being with us. Happy Friday. Good morning, America's next. We'll see you in about two hours.